playing with numbers in Drake's equation has showed us that intelligent life forms may be few and far between. The nearest civilization may be thousands of light years away if we are lucky. Finding a candidate among our closest neighbors must be considered extremely unlikely. But don't you know that there is an Earth-like planet in our neighborhood located just for light years away? It's Proxima b. Eight years ago, the whole world of science news was abuzz with discovering the closest alien planet to our solar system. While the detection seemed solid, more confirmation is always good. And now the James Webb Space Telescope has provided that extra and more detailed confirmation. In an extraordinary observation, the Webb Telescope has just announced the clearest image of Proxima b in history, revealing an astonishing discovery that could change everything we know about the universe and life on Earth. Join us as we dig deep into the mysteries of Proxima b and discover whether it could be the next Earth. As shocking as it sounds, we find exoplanets, or planets orbiting stars other than our Sun, all the time. Now we know of nearly 6,000 such planets plus another 10,000 planet candidates. So, what makes Proxima b so particularly exciting? First off, Proxima Centauri b is of particular interest since it's orbiting the closest star to our Sun, only 4.2 light years away. Its confirmation underscores current findings that such worlds are common in our galaxy. Proxima Centauri b is very similar in size to Earth, with a mass of 1.17 Earth masses. It orbits its star in only 11.2 days, in contrast to our Earth's year-long orbit around our Sun. That means Proxima Centauri b is a lot closer to its star than Earth is to the Sun. But because the star is a red dwarf, much smaller and cooler than our Sun, its orbit is indeed within the habitable zone of Proxima Centauri. Interestingly, Proxima Centauri b receives about the same amount of solar energy from its star that Earth does from our Sun. So, theoretically, Proxima Centauri b could have water on its surface. It could be habitable, but of course, we don't yet know all the details about habitability for exoworlds. We do know that many factors affect a planet's habitability, such as temperature, composition of the planet and atmosphere, water, and radiation from its Sunday red dwarfs like Proxima Centauri are known to emit flares, and these flares make habitability for red dwarf exoplanets even more complex and interesting. Worse, our usual methods for detecting biosignatures won't work with Proxima Centauri b. Most exoplanets are discovered through the transit method, where a planet regularly passes in front of its star from our point of view. We see the recurring dip in a star's brightness, and we know the planet is there. For transiting exoplanets, we can look for changes in the spectrum of the star. As the planet transits, some of the starlight passes through an exoplanet's atmosphere, and some wavelengths get absorbed by the atmosphere. By looking at the pattern of absorption, we can fingerprint different molecules. This is how we've detected the presence of water, carbon dioxide, and other molecules in exoplanet atmospheres. But Proxima Centauri b isn't a transiting planet. It was discovered by a different method known as Doppler spectroscopy. When we look at the light from Proxima Centauri, we can see its spectrum redshift and blueshift slightly over time. The gravitational pull of Proxima Centauri b makes the star wobble slightly, so we know the exoplanet is there and have a good idea of its size and mass. But since it doesn't transit its star, we can't observe its atmospheric absorption spectrum. Fortunately, there is another way we might find life from space. The most obvious sign somebody lives on Earth is the glow from the night side of our planet. Our cities emit light that's shed into the cosmos. The lights could be seen by telescopes on distant worlds if they truly exist, and vice versa. We also could tell alien technology exists on another planet in a similar way. In principle, the idea is simple, rather than looking for light passing directly through the atmosphere, look instead for light that has reflected off the planet directly. We've done this for planets such as Mars and the outer planets, which don't transit the Sun, so we could do it for exoplanets as well. For example, we may be able to see the light of a distant world waver with the transit of a massive constellation of satellites. Atmospheric pollution may be detectable from nuclear conflict, but while these indications of technology could also be caused by natural phenomena like orbiting debris or a comet impact, artificial illumination is distinct from the natural light of stars. The problem is that reflected starlight from a planet is tiny compared to the radiance of the star itself. 
Detecting the reflected light of a planet is like capturing the light of a firefly flittering near the edge of a spotlight. Luckily, we are living in the golden age of astronomy. Today, we have a new generation of telescopes that are powerful enough to see lights on distant worlds. One of them is the James Webb Space Telescope. Scientists scaled artificial illumination as a fraction of the solar illumination reflecting from the day side of the planet. 0% on this scale would assume that the night side of the planet is completely dark, devoid of artificial illumination. 100% means the night side of the planet is as equally bright as the day side. The type of light used by the hypothetical civilization on Proxima b is assumed to be similar to LEDs on Earth, which have a distinct artificial spectrum. The results, if the artificial night side illumination of Proxima b reaches 5% of the natural day side illumination, James Webb could detect the artificial light with 85% certainty. And if artificial illumination were to reach 9%, the Webb telescope detection confidence would rise to 95%. But James Webb turned out to be much better than we anticipated. Webb's mirrors collect light from the sky and direct it to the science instruments. The instruments filter the light or spectroscopically disperse it before finally focusing it onto the detectors. Each instrument has its own detectors. The detectors are where photons are absorbed and ultimately converted into the electronic voltages that we can measure. Webb needs extraordinarily sensitive detectors to record the feeble light from faraway galaxies, stars, and planets. It needs large area arrays of detectors to efficiently survey the sky. Webb has extended the state of the art for infrared detectors by producing arrays that are lower noise, larger format, and longer lasting than their predecessors. Thus, in a recent observation, James Webb has focused its sharp eyes on the closest alien planet to our solar system. New insights obtained from James Webb have dramatically increased the amount of data on exoplanets and their atmospheres available to researchers. We all know that Proxima b is like our planet in several ways, but there are many ways we know that it must differ from our planet Earth, including it must be tidally locked to its star where the same face always faces the star and the same face always faces away. It will have three climate zones, an ultra-hot one where it's always sunny, an ultra-cold one where it's always night, and an on-the-border one where it's always sunset or sunrise. The solar flares coming from the star will potentially be a danger for stripping the atmosphere away. Of course, we can concoct scenarios where the planet hangs onto or replenishes its atmosphere and has conditions conducive to life, but this is nothing more than wishful thinking. In reality, we do not even know whether this planet is Earth-like or Neptune-like. The typical border between an Earth-like world, where you have a rocky surface with a thin atmosphere, and a Neptune-like world, where you have a large gas envelope surrounding your world, is about two Earth masses. Proxima b has a minimum mass of about 1.3 Earths, but that's if the alignment is perfectly edge-on. Since there's no transit, we know the alignment cannot be exactly perfect. But how imperfect is it? That's gloriously unknown. If the alignment is inclined at more than about 25 degrees from our line of sight, it's likely to be a gaseous world, not a rocky Earth-like one. But at this point, without further information, we cannot know. If we were going to be as accurate as possible, we would state that there is a planet with an orbital period of 11.2 days orbiting the closest star to us, Proxima Centauri. It receives 65% of the solar energy that Earth receives and has a minimum mass of 130% the mass of Earth. That's it. That's all we know for certain. If we wanted to speculate, we could discuss all the reasons Proxima b is likely to be inhospitable to life, what challenges this planet faces if it wants to achieve habitability, and what we'd have to measure to know for sure. But the truth is that we don't know any more than this until we have better, more comprehensive data on this world. All we know is its period, the energy it receives, and its minimum mass. The age of exoplanet astronomy is upon us, and although the search for city lights on habitable planets may sound speculative, it is worth pursuing as a potential techno-signature. With planned instruments, it is possible James Webb will detect far less illumination or see the same on much more distant exoplanets. Proxima b orbits its star every 11.2 days, providing 32.6 more opportunities for its possible inhabitants to celebrate their birthdays than we have on Earth. Once per year. Sending a probe to Proxima is needed, but of course, 
A lot of technical challenges need to be overcome before we can hope to mount such a mission. In addition, a lot of questions need to be answered first, and Webb may provide us with some of the most important ones. We need to send a spacecraft that can decelerate and enter the orbit of the Proxima Centauri system. And once we are in orbit, our space probe will spend months or years taking photos and gathering data from Proxima B. But the biggest question remains, will we be able to find life in the Proxima Centauri system?